Radiant and Resilient is about mindset and faith to break paradigms and overcome challenges in our life. Because when the mind, body, and spirit are aligned, we literally radiate from the inside out. I'm Kay Vasquez. Let's dive in. In this episode, I want to dive into one way to really regulate our nervous system. And I'm sure you probably didn't think of this as a tool, and that is prayer. Especially in today's world, there's a lot of people talking about nervous system regulation and doing somatic practices like yoga and breath work and meditation. And yes, I've done them all and they can be helpful to help calm the body. But what I found to be the most powerful is prayer. Because when I go into prayer, I am focusing on connecting to God And not just that, I realized that my prayer has evolved over time because I grew up in the Catholic Church. And even though I grew up in the Catholic Church and I believed in God and I learned about prayer and would pray like the Lord's Prayer and would pray before I ate a meal and when I went to bed, no one really taught me how to pray. I just learned through observation, learned about how to pray through how my parents prayed and I love my parents, God bless them, (laughs) but my father would pray such a simple prayer before we would eat meals, and it was basically the same prayer every time we'd sit down to eat a meal, and he would add some additional things like praying for certain people, praying for circumstances, but the foundation of the prayer was basically the same. It was a very simple prayer. And my mom, anytime she would pray, I remember this, every time we'd hop in the car and go on a trip, she would go into prayer. It was always in Polish. She was muttering it under her breath, whispering the words. And it was loud enough so I could tell that she was praying in Polish. I could never understand what she was saying. So I never really learned about how we should pray. In the Bible, it talks about how you should pray and outlines the Lord's Prayer. And I think that's a beautiful place to start. If we don't know how to pray, starting with the Lord's Prayer, which can be found in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 through 13, is a beautiful way to start. And then we can build from there. So what I've learned is that Most of the time when people use prayer is when they're coming to God because they're going through a trial and a challenge. They need support. They need guidance. They need help. They're seeking an answer. They're seeking comfort. They're seeking solutions. There's something from God that they are seeking. And I must admit, a lot of my prayers were based on that. Like, God this is what I want. Can you help me get it? Or this is what I'm going through. Can you help me in this moment? We don't spend enough time in prayer, like thanking God and being grateful for everything that we have in our life. A lot of our prayer is focused on what we don't have or what's going wrong in our life. So as I got older and I really started to focus on my relationship with God, Diving into the Bible, I realized that prayer shouldn't just be focused on what's going wrong and what we want in our life and what we don't have. Like in Philippians, it says, don't be anxious about anything. Present your request to God, but give thanks first. And that was really the key component that was missing in my prayer. I wasn't thanking God. I wasn't giving God the gratitude, the praise, the glory for everything that I already had in my life. Instead, I was focusing on what I didn't have and what I wanted and what was going wrong. And so as my relationship with God started to change, especially as I continued to experience different trials and challenges in my life with my health, with my relationship with my parents, my relationship with my husband, with my finances, with my work, my career, my business, I started to evolve my prayer. I recognized that I needed to start with praise first to give God the thanks, to give God the gratitude. So I started to do that. I started to give God the praise, give him gratitude for everything that I have for my life. Then I would present my requests. Over time, I realized that I still sometimes didn't get what I wanted. And that was because one, it's not part of God's will. And two, 
Maybe there's a different way. There's a different path. Maybe there's something else God wants to give us that we didn't expect that's even better, even greater than what we expect. And so my prayer has shifted and evolved. It has been one of the most profound tools in helping to regulate my nervous system, help me to ground. So anytime things are happening in my life that are outside of my control, that are happening unexpectedly, I now go into prayer. And I want to give you an acronym because, like I said, I wasn't taught how to construct my prayer, but I've realized if we construct our prayer in this way, it can be such a powerful tool, not only to help regulate us, to help ground us, but it also helps us to connect to God. And we experience so much growth and beauty in our life. So the acronym that I want to share with you is PRAY. P stands for praise. So as I mentioned, we want to give God the praise, be grateful, thank him for everything that he's already given you. So reflect back on your life. Can you think of all the times that you went to God in prayer and he answered them? And even if he didn't answer them, what was the result? Because yes, it may not be what you wanted, but was it what you needed? Did it help you to grow, to evolve you? into the person you are today. Because we can focus on everything that we don't have right now, but there's power in recognizing and focusing on everything that God has already given us. And God has already given us so much. I know he's already given me so much. So start with praising God first when you go into prayer. Then next is R. I think this is probably the hardest part of the prayer because R stands for repent. Yeah. <laughs> It was hard for me to admit and take responsibility for things in my life. Repent. Maybe there was a situation where you didn't show up from a place of love, or you're trying to control a situation, an outcome, or you spoke unkind words to someone. Whatever it is, is there something that you need to repent? Maybe you're holding on to unforgiveness. Maybe there's something someone did to you in the past and you're still holding on to that and you need to forgive them because forgiveness is not for the other person. It's for you. And actually, if you haven't watched the Chosen series, I forget what episode it is, but in one of the episodes where Jesus talks to Matthew and he tells Matthew that forgiveness is a gift that you can give someone else. Forgiveness is a gift that you can give someone else. I thought that was such a beautiful way of just describing forgiveness. There's so much I want to share about forgiveness, but that will probably be for another episode. So think about what is something that you need to repent. For me, recently, I was sharing with God. I'm sorry that I haven't been grateful for this that happened, for that that happened that I haven't opened my eyes to see all the abundance that you've given us recently. So it could be something as simple as that. Like, I'm sorry, I've just been focused on what I don't have instead of focusing on everything that you've given me. Or I'm sorry that I needed external validation instead of recognizing my own worth. And if you don't know, you can ask God to reveal, what do I need to repent from? Because he will (laughs) reveal it to you. It will pop up in your head and you may be like, oh, if it's hard to repent, that's probably what you need to repent from. So praise, repent. The next thing is ask. And this is where you get to present your request to God. Ask him, God, I'm struggling right now. I'm not feeling my best right now. There's a lot of tension in my marriage right now. God, I don't know when we're going to pay the bills. Whatever it is. Present your request to God because God says, ask and you shall receive. Knock and the door will be answered. He wants you to present your request to God. God already knows what you're experiencing, the trial, the challenge you're going through. And there's a reason for it because he wants you to seek more of him. He wants to be the answer. He wants to be the provider. He wants to be the comforter. He just wants you to ask. He wants you to seek him and ask for him to come in and step in. That's why God gave us free will. He said, you can try 
to take matters into your own hands, try to figure things out on your own, or seek me, seek my kingdom, ask me, and I'm here. I want to give you what your heart desires. I want to help you through all the challenges in your life, but the reason you're going through a challenge or a trial, also know that it's here to evolve you, to help you to grow, to strengthen you, to help you step into the person that I'm calling you to be, but also to strengthen the relationship with me. Because God loves us so much, he wants to have a relationship with us. So sometimes a challenge and a trial is a way to get our attention. So if we can praise God, repent, and then ask, then he wants to show up. He wants to work in a way, a supernatural way that only God can do to fulfill your request. And then the last part of the prayer is why, which is yield. Also not as easy to do because yielding means surrendering to God's will. So yes, even though we're presenting our request to God, this is what I'm struggling with. This is what I'm going through. This is what my heart desires. At the end of the day, I know that your will is greater than mine. I know that you have a plan for me that's greater than my plan. Your thoughts are higher than my thoughts. Your ways are greater than my ways. So even though this is what I want, I'm surrendering my will to yours. May your will be done, not mine. And I love this verse in the Bible because even Jesus understood that no matter what we are experiencing, what we're going through, Jesus knew what he was about to endure and suffer for us because God loved us that much when he was about to go to the cross. In Luke chapter 22, verse 42 through 44, Jesus prays, Father, if you are willing, take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. That verse humbles me every time. If Jesus experienced suffering to the point that his body was under so much stress, that he was sweating blood because of what he was about to endure for us. Yet he surrendered to God's will. If it is your will, let it be done, not mine. Jesus didn't want to go through it because Jesus was human. He was human. He experienced emotions just like we did. He experienced trials and challenges just like we did. And that's why God chose him as his son to come and to experience everything that we experience as a human. Yet he was perfect. He didn't sin and was a sacrifice to clear out all our sin so we can receive God's spirit to guide us through this life. It's so humbling that someone so perfect that didn't sin also experienced suffering just like we did. Yet, he knew what he was here to do. He was here to fulfill God's will, and he did. Have faith and trust that whatever God's will is for our life, it's so much better than our own. We're all here for a purpose. We're all here for a reason. And maybe the challenge and the trial that we're going through is part of our story, is part of our testimony, is part of what we're here to do and how we're to serve if we didn't grow through that experience, then how are we to help others? And that's what I've really learned on my journey. All the trials and challenges that I've grown through that has helped shape and mold me into the person I am today so I can serve you from a place of love and help you reconnect back to the beautiful radiant light that's within you that comes from love. And cultivate that resilience so you can keep going no matter what challenge and trials are ahead. And so you can feel God's purpose in your life. There are a lot of tools out there. There's a lot of tools, a lot of things to help regulate our nervous system. But I truly believe that prayer is the most powerful of them all. It's simple, but it's effective. Especially in that order. Praise, repent, ask. 
and yield. The more you practice praying in that way, the more that God is going to be able to bless you in your life, to help you through those challenges and those trials, to help you grow and evolve. Because you are meant for so much more. You're here to do incredible things. So if this resonates with you, I love to hear from you. Please send me a message on Instagram at the Kate Vasquez and share this. Share this with anyone that is going through a challenge because this could be the one thing that can help them to cultivate that radiance and resilience from within.